Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! As things stand, stop all the clocks. I don't think we're going to talk about Brexit today. Not, not as a phone-in topic. I will not be able to resist a few choice asides. I may even treat you to one of my famous collage of clips. But um, I, I just don't see the point today. Nothing's going to change until, I mean, at least until Parliament gets back. I'll give you a quick heads up, though, for my new podcast out on Monday with Ken Clark. I had the pleasure of spending about 45, 50 minutes with him yesterday with the tapes rolling. Man alive, it was wonderful. It was like balm for the soul. I know I, the, the, in the context of Europe, um, Ken Clark and I both recognise reality, so we're on the same sort of team there. But um, amazing, really, isn't it, that a, a former Chancellor, Conservative Chancellor and, and, and Home Secretary and other great offices of state has managed to retain a degree of um, uh, admiration and respect from all corners of the political spectrum. It's a really, really interesting conversation. I can't say it's a brilliant interview because I conducted it and I only let through epic conceits like that by accident, never on purpose. But it's if, 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 I, if, if you listen to what Ken Clark says in this interview that isn't brilliant, you'll love it. It's required listening and it's really refreshing as well, actually, to... to, to remind ourselves of the fundamental humanity of politicians, I think, at a time again when we need to portray them as either 100% sinner or 100% saint and the horror of that scenario, quite deliberately, I think, engineered in, in America and in Britain lately and they're having a go at doing it in other countries. It is to create an environment in which Donald Trump can literally say the polar opposite of what he said yesterday, as he did with WikiLeaks, as we demonstrated in the last hour. If you create enough confusion, nobody can be held to their own previous statements, which is an astonishing, genuinely astonishing state of affairs. And so, so what we have today is the um, deal Brexit planning, which is breathtaking. Actually, I, I mean, figures vary. I've seen it reported variously as one and a half billion pounds and as 4.2 billion pounds spent on planning that is now on ice. Called what an absolute waste. Do you know we're still paying for the ferries that Chris Grayling organised? And we've been paying for them since March the 29th. These people. And of course, the threat of no deal or the notion that somehow we'd get the European Union to, to bow to our will by threatening to punch ourselves in the face um, was never, ever, ever going to work. Jonathan Portes from King's College explained in a great piece in The Times in, I think, November 20, 2017 why this was ludicrous. I sat here day after day after day saying, I promise you this isn't a tactic. The reason why it's... And it was as you never go into a negotiation without... Um, being prepared to walk away. And the whole point of that observation, which is usually true, is that when you walk away, you walk back to where you started. So in the context of... I can't believe I still have to say this in 2019, but I, I, and I hope I don't come across as, as too sort of um, self-congratulatory. It doesn't feel like a time for congratulations by any stretch of the imagination. You've still got people standing up in Parliament inflating the bonkers balloon of... No deal. Still, I think I heard David Davis saying it yesterday. The man's failure to understand the simplest of issues should, as we've said, have excluded him from any further involvement in any Brexit-related debates. But here's the simplest of simple things. You don't threaten to walk away from a negotiation if you don't know where you're walking to. You only say, right, that's it, I'm not buying this house after all, if you then get to stay in your old house right? You drive your car to the dealership and you start negotiating for a new car, possibly on part exchange with the old car. You don't drive your car to the scrapyard, stick it in the crusher and then go to the car dealership on the bus threatening to walk away if you don't get the deal that you want on the new car because you haven't got a car to get into anymore. That's why this line, no deal better, is better than a bad deal, was the single most stupid and there's a lot of competition. But the single most stupid gambit that Theresa May chose to employ, she chose it, as with all the other stupid things she's done, in order to keep the headbangers, the racists and the liars quiet on the fringes of her own party and beyond. It failed because it wasn't true. 
and she's now reduced to essentially saying any deal is better than no deal, which was true all along. So the line about having to be prepared to walk away with no deal has probably done more damage to the public's understanding of why we're in this mess than almost any other. And I've got a little tape to prove it, because now, of course, the claim is everybody knew that they were voting for no deal. It was clear from the beginning that they were voting for no deal. It's the only real Brexit that would deliver the will of those people, the 17.4 million. And, of course, not that long ago, the same people saying that, or some of the same people saying that, were saying something very different. We left the EU. We go through a two-year negotiating period. The worst-case scenario at the end of it is we don't get a tariff-free deal. Any Prime Minister, anyone doing the negotiating can almost pick and choose. Well, the one thing that they all have in common is that they are part of a free trade area, and that's the one thing I think we can take for granted. So negotiating a free trade agreement will be as easy as we want it to be. It's not as if we're India, where the history and the culture and the trade terms and so on are very, very different. They are completely aligned. So, you so think actually, it'd be a the fast, negotiation, easy negotiation, totally, is what you say. absolutely. We're already inside the single market. They have obligations uh, to us not to impose bar uh, trade tariffs or barriers that don't already exist. Well, I have no doubt at all that we will carry on trading tariff-free without tariff. -free with the European Union. Tariff free, point. which means a single market. Well, that's free trade. Is the deal we will have with Europe will not only be better for us, but it will be better than the deal the Europeans have amongst themselves. That's rather the point of that, I think. Access to the European market will be maintained, uh, and access to other markets around the world will be increased. That, that's really much of the argument for, for leave. Do we really believe that in Germany, that car workers would accept losing jobs as the price of the vanity of a particular leader? Do we really believe that a French president or prime minister would deliberately seek to restrict French farmers' access to our markets? I don't believe that's credible. A free trade arrangement that continued to give access to UK goods and services on the European continent. We will come up with a UK solution, and part of that will be keeping the very, very satisfactory and extraordinarily integrated arrangements we have with the Republic of Ireland. They've looked back at how that um, article came into the treaties, and the whole purpose of it was to avoid an economic shock for both sides if somebody left. I don't even have the list of names. You will have recognised some of them. One of them is, is, is currently giving a speech as the second leader of a new party, the first leader had to resign after a series of um, Islamophobic tweets were revealed, um, messages in which she shared the thoughts of former British National Party activists referring to white genocide, um, uh, sort of right-wing racist online activism of, of, of the sort seen as having inspired the man um, who undertook that terrorist attack in the mosques in Christchurch in, in New Zealand. Um, there it is, uh, the, the, the first leader of the so-called Brexit party also um, uh, retweeted a number of uh, Islamophobic... Oh, it's her, who we're talking about. So there you go, plus a change. It's the Judean People's Front, isn't it? Versus the People's Front of Judea. How are we supposed to know the difference? Islamophobia and, and, and mild racism and uh, weapons-grade ignorance about what the European Union actually means. So presumably, now that all the lies about what the European Union actually involves have been... Um, established, we'll be, we'll be looking around for some new ones. Which is why we're not talking about it today. We're going to talk about something completely different. And um, I, I want to talk to you, oddly, about Meghan Markle. Um, and I really want you to help me on this one, because I, I kind of don't find myself, oddly, given that I, I read all the newspapers every day, I think I just turn the page on royal stuff now. I'm not entirely sure why. It was never a beat that interested me much. When I arrived on, on Fleet Street a million years ago, um, it was... Princess Diana was still alive, and the royal beat was still one of the plum gigs. Um, Robert Jobson, who, whose work you may have come across, was, was one of the great stars of the Daily Express uh, to, towards the end of its glory years. And, and he was one of the lads in the office that we youngsters would look at and think... Yeah, that's what you want to be doing. He'd be jetting off all the time. His contacts boat was as long as your arm. He'd, he'd, he'd you know, be getting tips and scoops from people. And then the senior royals, whether you were a fan of it or not, you can't deny the fact they're really famous. They'd know him. And I, I just, I'd always looked up to Jobbo back in those days. But I never fancied the royal beat. Um, I was in Washington, oddly, when Diana, Princess of Wales, 
died in that tunnel in Paris. And, and remember the sheer scale of the story. It was, I mean, utterly breathtaking, almost impossible to relate to somebody who wasn't there at the time about the, the, the immensity of the international news event that that signified. And subsequently, the royal family has been through thick and thin, um, enormous travails in the immediate aftermath of that death. I think the sight of little Prince Harry walking behind his mother's coffin apparently, reportedly, was a very deliberate attempt to cultivate public sympathy that had been really compromised after the, the, the family were perceived to have reacted inadequately to Diana's death. You have this um, new royal family now, represented by chiefly Prince William and Prince Harry. But it, it's clear to me, uh, every day I, I flick through the papers, it's clear to me that Meghan Markle has been turned into a controversial figure. Right? I'm going to choose my words carefully. I'm not even going to say hate figure at this point. But Meghan Markle is being turned into a controversial figure. Almost every day there is a story either about something undefinable, uh, she doesn't want to have a baby in a hospital, she's um, uh, losing her staff, or she's feuding with, with the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton as was. Just that. I, and, and, and I just want you, as someone who pays a little bit more attention to this stuff, especially if you're a fully paid up member of the Royal Family's fan club, I just want you to give me a quick heads up on what's going on, okay? And, and maybe you think it's deserved or fair, or maybe you think I'm completely wrong and she's not being turned into a controversial figure at all. But I would remind you that I... I look at the outpourings from Fleet Street every single morning and I've developed this position through a form of sort of journalistic osmosis. I've obviously, even though I don't read the articles in depth, I'm obviously turning the page but registering the usual tone, the tombra, if you like, the flavour of the coverage. And, and it seems to me to be really negative. It seems to me to be the case that Meghan Markle is being turned into a controversial figure. And I don't really know why. And I'd like you to tell me. So there's two questions. Number one, is she? And number two, if she is, why? What, 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 why? You follow this stuff more closely than I do. Maybe you even buy those magazines that uh, congregate near the till in supermarkets and convenience stores. What, what, what's going on? Hit the numbers now. You will get through. And this is quite an odd question, having a sort of Brexit-free day. And also, I'm never entirely sure what the rules are when, when we're in election periods. So I'm a little bit... Um, I'll, I'll double check. I'll go on a course before Monday and come back um, newly invigorated. But, uh, but I, I, I really rubbed the only Ofcom complaint I ever got upheld. I came on a by-election day, so I'm very wary of um, where the lines are and what the rules are. So that's another reason why we're talking about this today. But chiefly, we're talking about it because I'm fascinated to know what's going on. And I mention that because if you've never rung me before or if you've never rung any radio station before, but I have actually just piqued your interest because this is a field you do care about and you do know about, well, help me out because I care about it, but I don't know about it. Is she being targeted in some slightly unpleasant way or am I imagining that or does she deserve it? Or is something else entirely going on? Give us a call. And, and you will get through, I promise. 0345 973 is the number you need. A perfect morning to break your LBC duck. A moment, we'll crack on with this question that I just need help with. Uh, you know, nobody's perfect. Uh, it's just a massive gap in my understanding of the current, current affairs climate. Why, why is Meghan Markle apparently getting so much grief? Uh, does she deserve it? It's probably a slightly irresponsible question, so we, we, we'll find a slightly more grown-up way of asking. Before that, I, I just got a lovely, lovely message from Lorna, which she says you probably won't read this out, but I am actually going to. Um, I presume you don't mind, because you just, it just charmed the socks off me today. James, I don't get the chance to listen to you anymore due to work, but I'm off today, so I have the pleasure of your company. I've listened to you since you started with LBC, and I was just thinking about how much your show has evolved. I don't expect you to read this out, but do you remember this? You had a phone-in about the strangest things that had been found in charity shops. See, my, my staff don't believe that we used to do mischievous, ridiculous, silly stuff like this. And a lady called in to say that they had been given a penis extender in one of their bags of donations. 
It was such a funny call. And what made it funnier is that one of her colleagues asked if she could take it home. You had her as your caller of the week that week. Fast forward 16 odd years and I kind of feel like we've grown up together. Lorna, what an absolutely lovely thing to say. Albeit with a slight caveat that it's possible only one of us have grown up. I don't do phonies like that anymore because I don't think I'm allowed to. Um... Should we have a crack at it on Friday? Oh, it is Friday. 21 minutes after 11 is the time. Back to Meghan Markle. Angela is in Redbridge. Angela, what's going on? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think, um, obviously, some people might think it's about her being from the United States. Some people might think it's about her race. No, well, hang on. You've already, you've dived straight in on the presumption that there is something going on. Um, to be honest with you, I don't follow the whole, the, all the stories, but I just see headlines and they're often quite negative. And yeah, well, I, I've I'm done that myself. I don't, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but I'm looking for someone who does know a little bit more about what's going yeah. on than I do. It's like, it's like a deja vu of the, the first idea, hour of this. I'm just toying with the idea that there's this element of... We need a good princess, Kate. No, I, I get all, I get all of that, but I'm I'm, I'm looking for, for for people who've been following it more closely than you and me, not not just toying with it. Keely is in South Woodford. Keely, what would you like to say? Um, I think it's even deeper um, than her race, but that's part of it. I think that she became a bit of a threat. She had um, or was getting a rather large following in her own right. Um, you know, so they all do. I mean, I mean, Diana did. That maybe isn't the best example, but the Duchess of Cambridge. Is, is, has a large following in her own right. No, you see, no? Meghan has charisma, doesn't she? As well, does Harry. Well, um, And they, they present a threat. Um, to whom? In the same to way whom? That Diana was. It's not and like Tudor times. He's not going to launch a... He's not going to have a civil war against his brother to get the throne, like sort of King John and Richard the... Well, it's not quite... A, a no, valid it wouldn't historic. be that literal, would well, what, what it? Then? What but then? What if, then? What if then? she's a queen or if she's a princess in, in people's hearts, you know, like Diana was aiming to be a rather queen in people's hearts, then... You know, I think she has, what is it, the men in grey suits or whatever, the people kind of behind the monarchy who decide who will be the figureheads, be in charge. I think they are. There is and what do you base this on? Because I, 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 like the last caller, have detected, but only from the sort of headlines and the mood music, that she's in somebody's sights. You, you, you obviously completely agree with that suspicion. Where's I your do. evidence? Evidence? Like you, there's just been a real turn, hasn't there? People so. were on her side to start with in the lead up to the wedding. And then I think the wedding part kind of did begin to switch it as well. I mean, I think the royal family do things to suit themselves. That kind of but she's in the royal family. It. She's her husband is a very senior member of it. He's fourth in line to the throne. Yeah, Fifth. but this, you know, Fifth. her being Fifth. back. And she's back, mixed, you know, she's of colour. For so long, people were saying about the royal family that, you know, oh, it's all white, they're not representative, etc., etc. When you think about how many kind of non-white people there are now in the country, no one can accuse them of doing that. So, you know, it suited them to have someone like her in the royal family. Yes. But I think they thought she would do it very quietly. So you think that people make phone calls? Wow, it was like, oh my gosh, that was a black wedding. (laughs) People from the palace make phone calls two newspapers designed to portray Meghan Markle in a negative light. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's possible, actually. I probably should have checked before I came on air with some of the people I know who write these royal news stories. But I, I'm with Keely. I know it sounds odd, and I don't normally go in for this sort of speculative, even vaguely conspiratorial theorising, but something seems to be happening. It might just be a commercial decision taken by Fleet Street, Keeley. You, you, you know, we talked in the last hour about in this day and age, and possibly it was always like this, we just didn't notice. You have to be either a saint or a sinner. You're not allowed to be a normal human being. So she started off as a saint. They got bored with that, so now they're turning her into a sinner. They're never going to allow another Diana. And Meghan and Harry together had that kind of potential. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because she was garnering... Uh, that's what you mean by a personal following, rather than just a following contingent upon her membership of the royal family. Remember, you're more than welcome to to, to poo-poo these positions, although I find them quite persuasive. 11.25 is the time. Richard is in Tower Bridge. Richard, what would you like to say? Um, I think it's, it's, you know, first of all, big fan of the show. I have been for some time. Um, I didn't think I'd firstly be calling uh, about an issue like this. I'm almost embarrassed, but um, I had 10 (laughs) minutes to kill. Um, So, 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 no, seriously. But um, I think for me, it's the the interplay of two things. I think the first is, um, I think that uh, papers like to sell a story. And I think you're right. She was a good news story at one point. And I think in her ability to try and limit the press and, and their involvement in her life, they're less able to have those photo ops and those moments that they can milk in terms of good news. 
So I think that they, they, they try and turn her into something else, a more of a controversial figure. It is the lack of respect that surprises me, given that you've just pointed out that Harry's a very senior member of the royal family. Yes. And I think that that, and I do believe, and I, I don't want to go too far here, but that might have something to do with her race. I think that the bar may be slightly higher for her and, and she might be being held to a slightly different standard than Kate would be. Well, I, I appreciate um, your diplomacy and your discretion, but of course we do we do realise now um, post-Brexit, whether you want to draw a link with Brexit or not, is, is, is moot. I do, but plenty of people don't. The mainstreaming, I mean, racism is back in the mainstream, it's back in the public discourse in a way that it wasn't during what we could loosely describe as the years of political correctness. So some people who don't like people of colour will pile in on her simply because she is a person of colour. And they'll do it more, uh, more publicly, sure. they'll do it more publicly and more viciously than they would have done five, ten years ago. Do, and I think they'll do it a little bit quicker. Yes, um, I do Whether too. they do it necessarily more viciously, I think they'll jump on it faster because there's a narrative that suits certain people that sell papers. Ultimately, this is about selling news. I don't think that uh, the press are as, uh, uh, you know, I think this is more about money. And, you know, if you look at the her desire to not show her baby and create that incredible press opportunity globally that primarily the British press would uh, profit from, I guess. Yes. Uh, you know, that demonstrates that, oh, so, so you don't want to go along with the established trade that makes us loads of money. You want to internalize that and do that on Instagram. Well, that doesn't work for us because we, we don't And is that the thing? That. Is that the thing with the, with the, with the home birth and the, and the not having the official photographs? Because, of course, sure. oh, crikey, because sure. if you were going to talk about a comparison with her sister-in-law, which, again, might be real or it might be something drummed up by the press, her great way of... Re redefining convention or doing something original was to do exactly what had always happened before, but to take the photos herself. Whereas... Can you imagine? And, and there was an argument that you need to see, uh, you know, an extremely important heir, someone like, you know, Prince George, um, because you need to see who will be the future sort yes. of, of uh, resident of the country. But this is different. This is this is more personal. But yeah, we pay, so... we pick up their bills, don't we? I mean, they're, they're, they're not going to be living in a in a. Their, their children are going to be able to play in the communal playground areas, aren't they? There's not much danger of them being confined to the poor door. So there is a trade-off, I think, between singing for your supper and and getting your supper. No or not? Uh, person, personally, as a, as as a person who has um, you know had to be involved in business, I see the great benefit that, that brand Britain brings to everything that I do. Um, and I personally think the royal family and the way that they carry our image globally has something to do with that. I, yes. I don't just look past that. You know, I honestly think that's quite a big deal. Um, and also, I think people have the right to have the birth of their children privately. I, I don't think that's something um, too difficult to ask. Well, um, well, well but, I think people have been waiting. It's all very well you having 10 minutes to spare. Not the most in, a ringing endorsement I've ever had from a contributor to the programme. But I, th I suspect people have either been waiting to talk about this subject specifically or they're just breathing an almighty Friday-flavoured sense of relief. That we're not talking about Brexit because my or, or something awful's happened and people are ringing in to complain and I haven't noticed yet. But the switchboard's just gone absolutely nuts. So there clearly is a widespread perception that that we're not tilting at windmills here. There is something going on that is worthy of note and comment. I, I, I know I would agree. I would agree, which is uh, w which makes this such an interesting topic. It has become so disrespectful, and that's what's surprising to me. Yes, and me as well. And I'm not a forelock tugger by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I, I do believe in judging people by their actions, and I'm not sure what she's done that merits this um, apparent onslaught from Fleet Street. And it's a very old-fashioned Fleet Street, this. It, 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 it's not forward-looking and modern. It is the royal family essentially exists to help us sell papers, and if any of them step out of line and forget that, we'll come down on them like a ton of bricks. Uh, Prince Andrew has, has sort of fallen foul of that attitude in the past as well, but not not... Of course, neither a woman nor a person of colour nor a child of the actual queen, only a royal by marriage. That's a fairly, it's a fairly compelling catalogue of things that she could get attacked for. And she's getting attacked. Why, why do you think it is? I'm not going to say does she deserve it, but I, I, you don't have to frame your description of what's going on in a necessarily sympathetic way. Um, possibly even. I was patting myself on the back for coming up with a novel and interesting conversation to have on a Friday morning. But um, maybe behind the curve, because there was, of course, that, that Vanity Fair article, which apparently involved the cooperation of a lot of Meghan Markle's friends, and it includes this quote from the royal historian Marlene Koenig, who, who wrote Queen Victoria's Descendants. Um, it, it, it's much more of an attack. It's a pile-on. This is the tone of stories about Meghan Markle, and so far, everyone recognises that there is something rather rum going on. It began in November 2016 when um, a Daily Mail headline 
Harry's girl is almost straight out of Compton. That's an NWA reference, isn't it? Ooh. Obviously, that's under the previous editor, Paul Dacre, not the current regime, who I think I think would be rather more um, well-mannered, measured and careful than that. But that was what prompted Prince Harry to issue an unprecedented official statement calling out the racial undertones of comment pieces. They spell outer uh, O-U-T-T-A, so that's a clear and crikey NWA references in the Daily Mail. But you know what N stands for in NWA, so you can see why Prince Harry perhaps was a little bit upset about that. I can. Um, I'm not ready yet to conclude that any negativity directed at her is, 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 is wholly due to her race, but I don't think anyone can argue that it doesn't have something to do with it. But let's examine the negativity and look at, look at where, why, why is it happening? Where is it coming from? 03456060973 is the number to call. Or, or tell me that, that actually you, you are almost sympathetic with the... People that are targeting her. I don't know. Valerie's in Huddersfield. Valerie, what would you like to say? Well, James, I'm not surprised that the switchboard is buzzing because uh, for a long time now, I've been really, really angry about what the press have been saying about Meghan. Go on. Well, you know, this should be the happiest time of their lives now. We were always hoping that Harry would have somebody that he could love. Yes. And, and now he's got somebody, and they're setting up home, and she's going to have his baby. And yet I she's look at all baby. the tweets and things. <laughs> well, yes, you know, the thing is, I look at the tweets and, and some of the mail and some of the other papers, and all they can do is pick fault. I it mean, does feel sister, like that. Do you follow these things more closely than I do, Valerie? Well, only when I look at my emails in yes. the morning, or I look at the, the But internet. this is what you would call an area of interest for you, whereas I'm obsessed with Brexit. Yeah, well, you know, in the morning, I just try and have a look at some what's in the news. Yes, exactly. And I get, I get, and I get angry because oh. they seem to be targeting her all the time. I mean, all right, she, she came to the royal family with a lot of baggage. There was a problem with her father, the problem with her sister coming out and telling all these stories. That was unfortunate. You know, it was unfortunate. And the thing is, she's riding above it. And look at the way that Prince Philip, walked her down the aisle, you know, I mean, everybody should warm to her for all these things. And I, I just feel really angry that the press is stooping so low. Because well, what are, are you? I mean, you can, be, on? you can be angry, but are you surprised? Didn't they do this to, to Diana before they deified her? I can't quite remember. I'm too, I'm too young. I'm not suggesting that you're not, Valerie. I just was, was did, I mean, actually, when Diana died, she wasn't getting a very nice time from the media at all. She was getting routinely castigated and, and metaphorically crucified by them. It's not new. Well, no, but they did reveal a lot of things that she'd been up to. I yes. mean, all the relationships that she'd had. Oh, well, there's the, the question. That what is, was... the, that's the question. Forgive me. What is Megan supposed to have done wrong? Just being slightly different insofar as I'm not going to bring into colour because she's a beautiful woman and yeah, nobody should ever is. go nobody should ever go down that road at all. I'd, I'd still be defending her if she was ugly. Well, of course she would. Don't bring but her beauty is, into it. So you're so superficial, <laughs> Valerie. But but look at her look at her previous when she was only twelve years old when she did that thing about an advert you know which which was prejudicial to women. And it worked because they took that advert off. Gosh. Do you remember that? No, of course I don't. I'll tell you your word for it. Well, she complained about a sexist advert. Sounds like one of my girls. Yes, because there were only women doing the washing up with, oh. the, with, the, with the washing powder. And so she, she got in touch with the advertisers. So, they, ah, they, so they what you're, you are leading me very gently and enjoyably towards the conclusion that she doesn't know her place. I think she's different. Mm. I think she's allowed to be different insofar as how she wants to have her baby delivered. How she wants... I mean, there was a story in the paper recently that the tennis player, Serena Williams, who's a friend, actually knew the sex of her baby. Now, that is absolutely ridiculous. Don't you think? Yeah, of course I do. But but it sells papers. I don't know where the line is between it being personal and it being professional. Do you see what I mean? Because if we're looking for... She's just a famous person who the newspapers have decided to have more fun being mean about than they have been. Not. I really like those two. I'm not going to apologise for that. I don't know them personally. But there's something about the pair that just, just sort of cheers me up. I like, I like I think them. It's, I think it's wonderful. I really do. And I hope that she ignores all these things that being said about her because they are mean, they horrible. I mean, look at the baby shower she had. Okay, she's, she's a wealthy well, you woman. Do know, you do know your stuff, although I have to point out, it wasn't Prince Philip that walked her down the aisle, you silly sausage. It was Prince Charles. 
Oh, yeah, of course. That's yes, right. he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been able to do it, would he? Nobody's unfortunately. Well, because he's got a bad back or something like that. You're right. So what, what can we do to help? Ignore it. Oh. I think you can't do anything. Well, I'm not doing that now. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> lancing the ball. I'm squeezing the zit today. Well, no, forgive the me. The thing is, we can't do anything about the, the freedom of the press. They can say what they like. But it's hurtful, and I think people... Uh, well, no one is disputing the analysis that she's on the receiving end of some fairly unfair treatment from the press and and you know you do wonder who's who is advising them do we know can we check is there anyone i know because you kind of i'd get alistair campbell on the case or someone like that like a real hardcore uh, media rot violer someone who knows where all the bodies are buried and and could therefore help them undertake if they think that they can somehow call the shots themselves that is sweet endearing but horribly wrong I uh, did this industry, the newspaper industry, as we've seen in recent years, is oh, man alive. It's like the mafia in places. Uh, Jonathan's in Finchley. Jonathan, what would you like to say? Uh, hi, James. How are you? Very well. Um, What's on your mind? Look, full disclosure, I'm not a supporter of the monarchy. I want to see a republic. The, the thing about um, Meghan, which kind of irrita irritated me, was... Um, and she, I, I have to say, she was reported as saying this. We don't have confirmation, but... She was reported in several places. She was reported as saying that um, uh, looking forward to the, the birth of uh, their, their first child, she said she didn't want men in suits um, at the birth. Yes. Um, implying, you know, she didn't want the usual um, people who attend royal births and who attended uh, Kate's birth. Now, that phrase, she doesn't want men in suits, I found that to be actually quite derogatory. Why? And number one, number one, it was sexist against men. Uh, number two, it let, is... Let's, it just, is let's just pause there, Jonathan. It's sexist against men for a woman to say that she doesn't want men around no, when no, she's I, I, lying I, on I a risk, hospital bed giving birth. James, James, I risk bringing the wrath of the entire female race No, no, down don't, don't say things like that. It makes you sound silly. Just explain what you mean by it being derogatory Look, towards course, men when a woman expresses a, a desire about who will be attending her actual childbirth. She and she, like, say, she like, like my she wife, not. wants women there, not men. What's wrong with that? James, she didn't say I would prefer to have women at the birth rather than men. That would be fine. She said, apparently, and it's only reported, she said, I don't want men in suits. And that phrase, quite honestly, is derogatory. Well, you need to tell me uh, why, because you, you keep repeating yourself and then making pro possibly less well, sense with each repetition. So it's, the, it's, so it's derogatory on a sartorial level. It's the suits that you're sticking up for. The phrase, James, the phrase men in suits is normally taken to imply the shadowy people behind the Queen who advised the Queen. Yes, but clearly in the context her. of a Labour ward, it would mean the, the, the Queen's gynaecologists, or it would mean the, 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 the gynaecologists that ordinarily work with the royal family. It wouldn't mean, it would oh, be Alan oh, Farthing it, and Guy Thorpe Beeston off the top of my head. So it's pretty yes, clear yeah, who well she done. referred to. You've got the name. So how it's is it derogatory men in, then? Men in suits would also refer to the people kind of... Not in a Labour people. ward. So, Shadow again, people. again, not in a Labour ward. How many times do I have to say this? Explain to me why the phrase is derogatory. Who are you offended? On whose behalf are you offended? Men or it's, suits? It's derogatory, number one, because it's sex. It suggests that men are not as competent to be at a birth. No, it suggests that this woman doesn't want men in her Labour ward, like a That's lot of women. Said. That's not what she said. She so what said did she, she say, then? Said, she said, she could have said... She doesn't want men in suits delivering her baby. She talked about... I'm reading the article suits, now. Which is, it's a deliberately derogatory phrase. To who? James. To who she is it derogatory? It, it derogatory to Alan Farthing and his colleagues. What, why? Uh, she just said, I don't want you in my labour ward. Because you're men and you say, usually wear she suits. Didn't say, she didn't say, I don't want... I just would pause a minute. Pause, said, pause a minute. Because to me, I and this might be... I know, it's important that you pause. Because to me, you are talking undiluted gibberish. And I think you've possibly realised that, having said it out loud. But, see, no, but this is why you have to pause. Because it's, cause I don't want to unfairly reach that conclusion. You need to explain to me who this is derogatory about. Because if I said I don't want Jonathan in Finchley on my radio show today talking about um, uh, menstrual cycles... OK, it would be because you are a man, and I'm interested in what women want to tell me about menstrual cycles. When a woman says, I don't want men in my labour ward, why is that derogatory to all men? That's not what she said. She said, I don't want men in suits. You just keep repeating now, yourself. Why is that derogatory, Jonathan? 
because the phrase men in suits denotes the shadowy people... Oh, I can't go, I can't between. do this anymore. I've just given you the names of the men that it refers to. So, so please park that nonsense and tell me how that is derogatory in any way, shape or form. If I was Alan Farthing, I would think that was derogatory. Yes, but you're not. You're Jonathan. Well, so why answer. do you that's think that's it's derogatory? Because the phrase men in suits is a derogatory You can't phrase. just keep... When I say why, James, you just keep repeating me. yourself. No, I'm not you're interrupting you. I'm, I'm insisting that James, you tell me why it's derogatory. You're interrupting me, James. Well, the only until you answer the question or admit that you can't. James, I have answered the question. The you haven't. men in suits... James, you're interrupting me. The phrase men in suits denotes the shadowy people... Oh, who for heaven's sake. Uh, mate, you are absolutely out there. That's quite incredible. On a subject that was supposed to be about warmth and friendliness and fellow feeling. Last chance, how is it derogatory? It denotes the people behind the Queen, the shadowy people behind the Queen. It right, so the they'll all be in the Labour it. ward, will they? And, and, and you, you, but how is shadowy not derogatory, Jonathan? That's not what she said. No, no, you said James. it. How is shadowy not derogatory? That is what men in suits denote. The to shadowy, you it does. Well, well, how, shadowy is very derogatory. What, what's shadowy the about these men that advise the Queen? That is because they're unnamed. They're always unnamed. And calling the them shadowy, behind. that's very derogatory. It's a lot more derogatory than describing what they wear. That is the connotation of the phrase Well, men in your in mind, why are they shadowy? That is the connotation well, of the phrase You keep saying connotation. Men in suits. Why are they shadowy? Because they're unnamed. They're always... But I've given you the names. Look, I think it's derogatory, it's sexist. Yes, but you can't tell me what it's sexist to say men in suits. What should she say, she persons in suits? She could have said... She oh, forget said, it, pal. I Seriously, what an absolute joker. 51 is the time. This is from Natalie. Most of the negativity towards Meghan is because of her race. If she was a tweed-wearing, pearly, white-skinned debutante resembling a horse and born in Britain, the male and co would back off. P.S. Jonathan, that caller right now, is talking rubbish. Well, he's not here to defend himself, so, um, I, 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 anyway, he'd accuse you of interrupting him. Um, the, the, the point a few of you make in regard to where some of the negativity towards Meghan Markle might come um, from is the notion that she actually challenges masculinity, masculine archetypes. Um, if you have a fear of women, then the sight of a woman who clearly doesn't take second place, she doesn't play second fiddle to her husband. I, I, again, this is an area that I just don't get. I can't navigate it. I can't imagine being married to somebody who kind of, you know, sees their role as being supportive and domestic rather than as a marriage of equals, a partnership of equals, complete equals. Harry and Meghan look like that. I don't know. Uh, because, again, I don't, I don't know as much about them as you do, but they certainly don't seem to be a couple where he makes all the decisions and she goes along with them. Um, perhaps unfairly, Kate Middleton much more gives the impression of somebody who um, is quite happy to do that. I, I mean, even in terms of career and what you've achieved before you waltz up the aisle. Meghan Markle had achieved uh, considerable success in an incredibly difficult sector, show business, acting. Um, I can't remember what Kate did. I think she worked for her parents' party but, see, I, I want to say that in a non-negative way, but there is an attitude, there is a male attitude, okay, that a lot of women also endorse that is, is for my modern sensibilities, horribly outdated. But, of course, for the people that subscribe to such sensibilities, they resent furiously the idea that it's horribly outdated. But I can't quite get my head around how anyone could end up in a place where they think the phrase men in suits is sexist when it's used to describe people of the male persuasion who wear suits. <laughs> what else are you going to call them? <laughs> besuited, besuited bipeds? There we go. Besuit I don't want besuited bipeds of the masculine persuasion in attendance when I drop my sprog. Richard is in Uxbridge. Richard, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Good morning. Hello, Richard. Um, I'm not besuited, I'm afraid. Are, are, are you a biped? Uh, yes. Just okay. look down two legs. Ca carry on. Um... I just, I want to say, I, I feel like I remember vaguely this, the papers trying something similar with Kate Middleton originally. Yeah. Um, I remember, now, like, this is vague memories, I don't follow, like, like you said at the beginning of the yeah. hour, I don't follow royal news that closely, but I remember phrases like marrying a commoner trying to be kind of chucked around. And there were reports that some of the set, the, 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 the posh set, um, used to go doors to manual when Kate and her sister were in attendance because it was a, a nod towards the fact that their mother had a job, in this case as, a, as an air hostess, rather than 
just sort of following around, mopping up after their inbred husbands. Yeah, because how dare you have a job? Yes. I also find the word commoner like like describing someone who's I would say very much upper middle. In the case of Kate Middleton, yeah, well, trade. You see, I mean, back in the day, Richard. <laughs> Back in the day, it would be a question of whether one had to earn one's money or whether one just sat in one's country pile counting the coffers that were coming yeah. in. So you could call yourself a farmer, but you wouldn't know one end of a turnip from the other. You had people to, to sort your turnips for you. So, so it's, it's just the difference between inherited wealth and, and earned wealth. And, yeah, I mean, and just the, as a random anecdote, yeah. I'm in uh, a performance of My Fair Lady this week. and That's I, not a random anecdote. That's a cheeky free advert. That, no, because I haven't mentioned the name of the theatre yet. Very wise. Carry on. Um, and I won't, I promise. <laughs> Good. Well, you but, will no, now, because I'm, I'm going to ask that you, because you haven't deliberately it. smuggled it in. Well, who are you playing? Henry Higgins? Freddie Einstein Hill. But, oh, what's uh, a lovely I'm seriously part. not calling to talk about my show. Well, like, you are now. That's a lovely part. Are you a bit jealous of the fellow playing Henry Higgins? Uh, well, yes, because I auditioned for Henry. There you go. Yeah. See, there's always, there's, always a tale. there's always a tale under the surface, uh, under Indeed. the grease paint. Anyway. Carry on, Richard. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I remember this about Kay Middleton, and I think, because there was some... There were some calls earlier that were, I felt, suggesting maybe there's, like, palace briefings. Yes, that's right. Um, I feel more like this is papers trying to sell papers. It's self-generated. Um, and it's... Because I remember even Tony Blair in his autobiography talking about, after Diana's death, he talks about papers kind of trying to test the waters to see when they could start yeah, going back right. to attack mode. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It just right. feels like that's how it works. Like, it just, we are, it's just a fairly unpleasant industry that, that, that is... Um, a lot more comfortable and at ease throwing abuse at people than it is throwing love or, or praise. Back to I, I think part of that is because it does seem to help paper sales going on the attack sometimes. Well, when, uh, shortly after I left the Express, um, and it went through this very curious period where it had either Diana or the weather on the front page, and that was simply counting. It had nothing to do with journalistic quality or editorial policy. The, the, the fellow that owned the paper at the time noticed that they flogged about 30,000 more copies every time the weather or Princess Diana was on the front page, so it didn't matter whether they had a story or not. It just sticked. And, and, it, and it felt like that only really changed when they then got... Madeline McCann is the new thing too. That's very true. No, God, you're it's a, a very tragic story. I don't want to no, no, you're not. That. You're not. You're right. I mean, it was. My, it was my parents get the express, and yeah, still. Diana's face was replaced by hers. Still. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, they seem to try this with Kate Middleton, and on a slightly different level, and it didn't work. Um, I'm moving on. Before I do that, where are you performing? Sorry to, get, sorry to talk over you. That's all right. I, I think you got faded. Uh, Keith is a bit trigger-happy on the old buttons. Where, um, Keith, stop it. Jonathan's talking. Oh, Jonathan, Richard. <laughs> stop being so derogatory. Where are you performing, my fair lady? <laughs> I did phone him with... Well, I was trying you, to make a point. You've made I'm some really brilliant points. Point. You've made some brilliant points. Now I would like to find... Oh, do you, do you feel you haven't finished? Uh, well, yeah, I hadn't... I shall zip my mouth until you have concluded your contribution. Was, yeah, I don't, didn't have much more. It, was, it didn't take with Kate, and then it feels like maybe the fact that you're having this as a conversation point is taken a bit more with Megan. Mm. And I feel like maybe this is where the, what used to be, unspoken racial elements yes. come in. Um, as you've already said on the show, it, it's like they're less unspoken because of the way the tone of the country is yes. become, without mentioning the B word that we're not doing today. Correct. Um, so uh, is that, because that's more, that becomes more, still the paper's just trying to do what they do and sell papers. And is Could that be that, in which case there's, there's the no public. big evil conspiracy. It is just the old sort of, you know, attention-seeking provocation, selling tickets for, for a form of ghost train. Now, yeah, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even, oh. yeah, I wouldn't say conspiracy. It's, Papers no, I'm not. as a business trying yeah. to sell... It's just a model. They're doing what they do best, which is encouraging yeah, people to hate. taking better, and is that because of us, the terrible unwashed general public, having certain unspoken things that are now getting more spoken of, and so it's taken more with Meghan than with Kate? You could be right. I am, I am now going to interrupt you, because gonna, we're going to hit the news in a minute, and I want to know where, where are you... But You don't have to avail yourself of this wonderful opportunity, but you, you can if you wish. Where, where are you performing, my fair lady? At the Winston Churchill Theatre in Ricelip. There you go. Performances tonight, two tomorrow. Um, mostly already nearly sold out, but feel free to try. Oh, fantastic. All I want is a room somewhere. Oh, lots of chocolates. That'd be nice. Far away from the cold night air. And an enormous chair. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely? 
I don't think the world will ever see my Eliza. Uh, it's coming up to 12 noon. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Don't wipe the board yet, because this is really funny, and I'm really enjoying it, and, and it's not normal for us to do stuff like this. Uh, but, uh, one of the callers earlier, without mentioning any names, Jonathan, uh, it suggested in a tweet that I was actually having a conversation with, a, with, a, with a, um, an Amazon Alexa device, and I said that in quite a garbled way so that I didn't set off any devices uh, with an echo there you go because it did turn into an echo and oddly that is the conversation that we were planning to have in the next hour because I, I kid you not if you're listening a few weeks ago they really are listening to us we're having a royal phone in this is the first ever successful royal phone in I've conducted in in nearly two decades of doing good grief is it that long certainly a decade and a half I don't like counting um ever I've finally found one that people want to join in on I don't what did I do differently in the introduction I don't know. I've never, ever had a successful royal phone-in before. I, I, we've always got through, but by the sort of but last seven or eight minutes, it puts through some right old rubbish. So uh, this is incredible. Um, before we return to that and indeed address the very troubling news that it would appear that that device you've got in the corner of a room um, with a girl's name beginning with A really is listening to you, I, I, I just need to triple-check that, actually, because it's slightly terrifying. Amazon is eavesdropping on homes across Britain with workers listening through and uh, through the firm's Alexa speaker. An investigation has found. Oh my days! I kind of said, "Don't be silly." Turns out I was the one being silly. Before all of that, I need to tell you that the Daily Telegraph has been forced to correct a column by Boris Johnson after the Brexiter MP and potential Tory leadership candidate falsely claimed that a no-deal Brexit was the most popular option among the British public. You will have seen a lot of people repeating this claim and various variations thereon. This one was made in a column published in January, since being removed from the online version after a complaint by a member of the public to the press regulator Ipso. The correction says, and remember that this will not be brought up by anybody who interviews Boris Johnson in the coming weeks or, or, or months. In fact, no poll clearly showed that a no-deal Brexit was more popular than the other options. This correction is being published following a complaint upheld by the Independent Press Standards Organisation. Um, the complainant, who is a statistician from Reading, i.e. someone who really does like counting, said that to exaggerate like that is clearly out of the Trump-Bannon playbook, but because it was in print and the phrase used by Johnson was so strong, contrary to the lack of evidence, that I, as an avid poll watcher, knew didn't exist, I knew I had a decent case. Here is the astonishing thing from the Daily Telegraph's defence of Boris Johnson's blatant lie. He receives, of course, just £275,000 a year for his Daily Telegraph com column, a sum he once referred to as chicken feed. I tell you what, though, he sticks it to those elites on a daily basis, old bozzer. Here is the Telegraph's defence of Boris Johnson's blatant lie. He is, quote, entitled to make sweeping generalisations based on his opinions... Um, they added that the piece, and I quote, was clearly comically polemical and could not be reasonably read as a serious, empirical, in-depth analysis of hard factual matters. So the Daily Telegraph, owned, of course, by those doughty enemies of elites, um, the owners of the Brits Hotel, has decided to pay Boris Johnson £275,000 a year not because they're hoping to get news coverage or front-page splashes out of his comments and opinions, although of course they get plenty of both, but because he's clearly comically polemical and could not be reasonably read as a serious empirical in-depth analysis of hard factual matters, which I have to tell you reminds me of the Infowars goon Alex Jones when he had his custody hearing and claimed that this whole um, uh, despicable uh, public persona where he maligns and, and libels routinely the grieving parents of dead school children from the Sandy Hook massacre was somehow a performance and therefore not to be held to the same standards as, I, I don't know, a, 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 a proper journalist or a proper columnist or a proper presenter. Boris Johnson's employers here conclude that they pay him 275 grand a year for stuff that could not be reasonably read as a serious, empirical, in-depth analysis of hard factual matters. So why do you keep sticking them on the front pages then? And why the hell do people in my profession keep treating these 
burblings like news answer everything is broken seven minutes after 12 is the time you're listening to james o'brien on lbc we do a little bit more on this curious um very curious negativity towards Meghan markle and and perhaps perhaps an outrider perhaps just a a, a one-off but certainly a, an intimation from an earlier caller that she challenges male archetypes and that's the problem you know, she says she doesn't want her birth to be attended by men in suits. Some men, possibly only one man, but some men apparently find that derogatory and offensive and or offensive. That I do not get. If you do, you know what to do. Juliana is in Kennington. Juliana, what would you like to say? Um, so I'm not a massive fan of Megan, and I still am not, wasn't in the beginning. But I Who are you a massive fan of? Um, I really like Kate Middleton. Oh. I think she's my favourite royal. Well, then yeah. have you not fallen into the trap of being forced to pick a side in some way? No. No, no carry because, on. because, like you, I look at the headlines, but I don't feed into the content. Okay. I like to know who's saying what. And I think so the what do you, is the what, what, what do you like about Kate Middleton? What turned you into a massive fan of somebody who, for, for a lot of us, seems to be almost impossible to discern? So, just to correct your previous caller, yes. Kate has had a job. She used to be a buyer for a British brand. I can't remember what brand it was. I'm tempted no, that to wasn't, say... That wasn't Bennett a previous caller, that was me. She, 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 worked, oh, that was she had a part-time yeah. job for Monsoon, which was run by a friend of the family. Not All right, didn't know that information. And That's then she went for. through this terrible heartache situation that, that um, her husband put her through prior to the engagement. Right. And the reason I liked her is because she was so resilient... She didn't feed into the press. She carried on. Her sister supported her. She didn't do messy things like, you know, what you're expected to do when your heart's breaking and you're 25. You know what I mean? No. She just kept her decorum, didn't go clubbing, wasn't well, vomiting mean, outside you, you know, of Nobu. You, you mean she, 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 she hung around hoping that her man would take her back? See, what I saw was her seemingly getting on with her life. And if she, he came you know, she back got photographed with one of his mates. That stuff doesn't happen by accident. God, I know more about you know this what, than I realise. I don't I remember realize. that. No, well, there's a lot of stuff you, you don't remember. Right. I, don't, I don't want to strip yeah. you of your fandom because I, it's all, always nice to have enthusiasm. It's, but and this is the thing: it's what we're led to. It's what we're tripped into liking and disliking, or believing and not believing. Well, look at you. Yes, yes exactly. Press, yeah, the press do it strategically. The reason well, I worked. think that Meghan Markle <laughs> is having a hard time yes. is because she's quote end quote untidy she's messy she's got a previously failed marriage she comes from oh, a very broken that. home yes. she's got she's a hollywood actress she's not quintessential well, so does prince william his well, dad his dad has a horribly failed marriage and he comes from a horribly broken home but you just you just don't see it that way do he's you allowed because of the position that his mother holds yes that's the difference and the, if megan megan's family just created an air of untidiness around her which made it okay for people to talk about her in that fashion which is it's completely unfair if, but you know if what you've just done i mean i may have got i've got monsoon right but but she I, i'll double check that but you've just made me realize that her, his family is just as dysfunctional as hers exactly but the difference what do you mean is exactly because, no but what i mean is the reason they make it okay to dis to to disrespect Megan in that fashion or to talk about her in that way is because of the Jigsaw. fact that she is... Jigsaw Junior. She was a part-time accessories buyer for Jigsaw Junior. Oh, it was Jigsaw. Very British brand, yeah. There we go. Carry Megan on. is allowed to be spoken about this way because yeah, of who right. she is. Yeah. And I think if, if she was English from an aristocratic family, I think they would have been able to manage this content better. You're brilliant. Got... You're brilliant. What's the name of that other one? The, the, the actress uh, that Harry went out with for a while with the blonde hair? Oh, I, I can't remember. I just the one with the double-barrelled like... name. The double-barrelled name. Oh, God. No, no, don't, don't I'll get there me. in the end. Know. I've got this is what you they will. pay me the big bucks for. I've got a memory like a magpie. Oh. Um, hang on a minute. It's not David. Shush. Um, no, I know. I could even name my mum. My mum, my mum, Curzon. I know her face. Crescent de Bonus. It's not double barrel. And she's friends with the, um, um, Virgin Man's daughters. Like, uh, probably, Richard but, but daughters, Cressida yeah. Bonus' is, uh, background is, is aristocratic, but also involves exactly. multiple marriages in, in a part but of her because parents. Of the, because of the position her family held, you didn't hear much about it. And she was, why didn't he marry her? Oh, she so got it's class away. and race. It's class it, and I race. Now, this is what I said to your assistant, your, produ your producer. Race but comes no. into it, but I don't think it's a mitigating factor. 
Well, it's obviously a factor I, if it comes into it. It is a factor, but, but it's, it's not, not the, the only factor. You're going bigger yeah. on class. I think you might be right. I think it's a class system. And again, the reason I think this is because I've married into a class that I'm beneath. Have you? And I'm facing... Yes, I have. I've, I've, but you're called I've Juliana. Married, that's only because my parents named me well. Well, it worked. But I, I married into a family that I would never have had access to, and by chance I met my husband, and I'm facing the same issues, but oh, on a much smaller thing. scale. Yes, on a much smaller scale. And again, my husband and I have a race issue, well, well a difference in race. Yes. And the thing that, the race isn't a big deal for the families, it's the class. Oh. It's the class that is a massive issue. Well, I'm going so to stop, just like, pause briefly if you would, because I know you're about to give me examples. I'm going to stop being a little bit facetious and glib in this conversation because you're now talking about quite clearly personal issues rather than just being a foil to my attempts to poke fun at various <laughs> positions. So, so I want to change the tone of the conversation, genuinely, sincerely. And I, and I want you to tell me a little bit about what, a little bit of what, what demonstrates the prejudice, the class prejudice that you endure, bearing in mind that your mother-in-law might be listening. Well, the, the thing about it is, is I mean, I'm able to compartmentalise it. So yes. my husband and I have an amazing relationship. Good. And we're moving into another sector of our relationship. We're pregnant and we're, we're, we're having triplets, which is just Shut a freak up. of nature. Are I you serious? You, randomly, no IVF, just a freak of nature. What a call. And Switchboard's gone bonkers today. It's, Carry on. It's insane. So now what we've found is my, my mother-in-law and my husband's family haven't outwardly said that they have an issue with me. And I mm. don't think it's racial. Mm. What they're disappointed in is the fact that, and these are my words from my observations, yes. the fact that my husband didn't marry one of his own. Yes. So it's, I, he's married beneath him. At our wedding, one of his godparents said, well, do they have any money? Yes. I was about to Where say, is that, that's, surely that's more about money than class. And, and where do they come from? That's another thing. So the where do they come from comes first. Yes. Who is Juliana and what's her family about? Yes. And then they find out from the name and all of these other factors. And then that's when they start thinking, oh, God, oh, God, what's he done? Do you know he just, the best yeah. story about this? Just to highlight the sort of snobbery, the sort of mild snobbery. Well, it's, it's not mild in essence, but it's mild in <laughs> articulation. Do you know the Michael Heseltine? Put down? Yes, I do. Well, yes, there you I go. do. You know, for, yes, you know I do. That, well, that's what you're talking about, isn't it? Yes, I do. And it's very prevalent. And the, the thing about it is, is Megan is doing the best that she can. Again, I'm not a fan. I'm yeah, but I'm surprised observer. at you because, I mean, you know, Greg, this is almost like a therapy session. I, I how can you, after what you've just told us, feel a sort of I, kinship I with Kate think... Middleton? Don't interrupt me when I'm being rude to you. How can you feel a kinship <laughs> with Kate Middleton and describe yourself as not being a fan of Meghan Markle when in many ways See, you're enduring a... Kinship. a... Oh, okay. I know what order is. Law and order. And that's what the British press want from her. Law yeah. and order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about know right your place. and wrong. It's law and order. Know your place. And then the other thing is Meghan isn't helping her cause. I silently oh. sit in the background and complain to my husband. Meghan is very vocal and they don't Good like that. Well, I prefer her tactics to yours. No offence. Well, I don't have a massive platform and I don't have... I do now. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a smaller group of people. <laughs> you that do I now. You're on the James O'Brien show. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I right think that's laugh. it. I think it's a class. I think it's just class. You've covered it. And for people who aren't familiar with that famous put-down of Michael Heseltine, employed by what you would describe as the old money set to um, seek to put a, a, a very ambitious and successful young man who didn't come from old money in his place, I shall tell you what it was after this. Juliana, you're a star, and good luck with... Goodness me, I can't even begin to think how tired you're going to be in a few months' time.